Hi! In this two-part video, I'll show you how to set up manual caching in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Then I'll explain what caching is doing for you and if you need to use it at all. For this video, I'm using Microsoft Flight Simulator version 1.15.8.0. If you're using a newer version of the sim, changes may have occurred that render portions of this video obsolete. From the main menu, go to Options at the top here. The first panel is for General. Inside of this menu, we have Data on the left side, so we select that. At the bottom of the Data menu is the Caching Options. As you can see, I have a rolling cache defined here. Its size is 10 gigabytes, and I store it on a custom path on an SSD. This is where I also keep my SIM. For demo purposes, I'll delete it so you can see how that works. It takes a moment, and now you can see it's turned off and the size and location controls are disabled. Oddly, the delete option is still enabled, and indeed I can click that and confirm the delete again, but obviously it's not doing anything since I already deleted it. Moving down to the manual cache option, I can click this to have a look at the manual cache elements that I've created as well as to create new ones. The map in the manual cache page always defaults to the city of Bordeaux in France. That's where the Asobo offices are located, the developer of Microsoft Flight Simulator. You can see I'm using the same custom path as the rolling cache used. It's set to 10 gigabytes in size, and you can use this modify cache button to increase it if you need to. You cannot, however, reduce it. As you can see, I have three regions defined in my manual cache. I can click on a single one and then select to delete it if I so choose or I can click on this checkbox to select all of the manual cache regions and delete them all at once, which is what I'll do now. It just takes a second to perform this task. As you can see, unlike the rolling cache, there's no option to delete the actual cache defined for the manual system here. To overcome this, we have to delete the cache file manually, which I'll do in a moment. Notice that if you exit the data menu, it will take you back to the general options and select the graphics setting at the top. You'll have to reselect the data option to return to that menu like this. To delete the manual cache file, I need to go out to Windows, so I hit the Windows key and launch the Explorer window that I already have running here. However, you cannot delete the file while the sim is running as you'll get a file in use error from Windows indicating the sim has the file locked. To delete it, we need to exit the sim and go back to Windows. Now I can delete it and empty my recycle bin to get rid of it once and for all. I'll relaunch the sim here. Back in the sim, we return to the options screen, general, and back to data. I'm going to re-establish the rolling cache here. I just need to turn it back on. It already defaults to my custom pass, so I just need to add a size value here. I'll use 10 gigabytes. Oddly, there's no apply and save option. This is a bug and I'll discuss it later in the video. To create the cache, you need to either exit the data menu or enter the manual cache system. I'll go into manual cache. As you can see, it's now creating the rolling cache for me and indicates its progress here. Once completed, we can set up a manual cache. You can see we're back in Bordeaux. It's defaulting to my custom path for cache, as you can see here. I need to add a size value below here. I'll set it to 10 gigabytes. And now the Create Cache button is active, so we click it to create the cache. It will take a few minutes to create the cache. Sadly, it has no progress indicator, unlike the rolling cache system. Once it's complete, the Cache New Region button is active at the bottom of the screen. Note that we have a Modify Cache button, but we can only expand the cache, not reduce it. I'll put the map at a location of interest for us to cache here. I'll use the Kilo Victor November Yankee for this example. I'll say KVNY since we're not on a radio. It's a regional airport in the Los Angeles area. It takes the caching system a moment to display the area of the map. If it looks blurry to you, just give it a moment to load the map data up and it should clear up. Now we click on the Cache New Region button like so. 
we have this text box here where we can name the manual cache that we create. I like to set this first, otherwise I tend to forget it later and after setting the manual cache, I'll save it and end up with a name like New Region 1, New Region 2, etc. So we'll set this to KVNY like so. Right now it's indicating that we're going to create a medium quality cache for this area. We control this by zooming in and out on the map with the mouse wheel. You can see the blue square and a grid on the map. This will change to smaller squares as we zoom out like so. At a certain point of zooming out, it will reset back to the larger square like this. Notice that the cache quality is now set to low. Zooming back in, the squares reset back to smaller size and begin to get larger again like this. Now we're back to the medium quality. Continuing to zoom in until the squares once again reset back to a smaller size, we can see the quality is shifted to high. For our example here, we'll create a high quality manual cache for KVNY. In the upper right is a panel that details how to select areas for caching. Clicking and dragging with the right mouse button enables the paint function, which allows us to click and drag to define a region of the map to be cached like this. Since I'm trying to create a high quality cache, I can't zoom out to see more of the map, otherwise I'll end up creating a medium quality cache. But I can still move the map with the left mouse button, like so. Now I can continue to add to my cache definition by right mouse clicking and creating a new region. This will allow me to continuously add new areas to this single manual cache definition. I might want to expand it at the bottom like this and then expand it at the top as well. We also have brush mode, but I'll illustrate that tool in another area of the map that's more appropriate for it. Below that, we have the remove option. While holding the control key, I can click and drag with the right mouse button to remove sections that I've highlighted and exclude them from the cache like so. Notice that the highlight on the map is now red instead of blue to indicate that it is deleting data. In the event that I want to start over, I can click the reset button down here and it will remove all of my cache definitions so that I can start over. I'm going to move over to the Santa Monica Beach area of Los Angeles so I can show you how to use the brush mode. Using the normal selection tool like this, I can start to define a region, but I end up picking up the beach and some of the ocean. I don't need the ocean to be part of my cache. Here I can use the remove option to eliminate that section of the map that I don't want cache by holding down the control key as I drag with the right mouse button. Here I'll reset it and I'll define two regions and try not to include too much of the ocean. I do want to include the pier area and its amusements though. So I can use the brush by holding down shift while I drag the mouse using the right mouse button and now I can create regions that are not square or rectangular like the normal right mouse click paint option creates. Now I have a region that follows the line of the beach and includes the pier. Let's create the manual cache for this definition. As the cache is created, we'll get this indicator that shows us a percentage of the cache completed along with an ETA for completion like so. We can pause or abort the creation of the cache. If we pause it, we'll see we have an entry in the cached regions list here and an indicator to show that it's currently paused. I double click on it to select it and the resume download button at the bottom of the menu is now enabled like this. Now our region is highlighted in white instead of blue to indicate that this area has a manual cache defined for it. The final element to look at here is the eyeball icon to the right of the name in the list right here. Let's say I'm currently looking at Paris in the cache interface. I can click on the Santa Monica's eye icon and the system will jump to that area of the world and show me that cached region. Before we move on to part two, the cache explanation part of the video, I wanted to point out two bugs in the UI. When enabling your rolling cache, the apply and save option may or may not be present in the UI. If it's missing, just exit the screen and you'll be prompted to save your changes. The other bug is a bit more insidious. Occasionally the sim will disable the manual cache button like this. 
The only way to re-enable it that I have found is to click the Reset to Defaults option at the bottom. This will reset your path to the default. For rolling, you can just point it back to your original path and it should see the old cache file there. For the manual cache, when you reset the path back to its custom location, it resets the cache entirely. Any manual cache definitions that you had previously defined will be gone. You'll have to set the cache size again, let it recreate the cache file. Luckily, this bug is not very common. In fact, if you're using the default cache location, you may not ever see this bug. But since I use a custom location, I've seen it several times. Okay, that's it for part one. Let's move on to part two and find out exactly what does caching do in this simulator. I've seen a lot of misinformation about what caching does in Microsoft Flight Simulator on the net, and certainly I'm guilty of part of that. My previous caching videos made assumptions about what caching was doing that were incorrect. Since that time, I've spent many hours doing extensive testing with the caching systems in an effort to understand precisely what they're doing and why they're included in the sim. First, let's start with the fact that caching has zero impact on FPS. It has no performance impact whatsoever. My experience with caching systems in the past has been strictly for performance. An example of this might be, an application would cache commonly used data elements in local memory instead of fetching them from across a network from a database to speed up performance. As such, my original assumptions about caching in Microsoft Flight Simulator was that it was there for performance. Wrong. Let's talk about the two different types of caches and then what they're used for. Rolling cache is a file that the most recent photogrammetry data that you have flown over is stored in. It is referred to as rolling cache since once the file fills up, Flight Simulator continues storing photogrammetry data at the beginning of the file, overwriting the oldest data in the file. Manual caching is a fixed cache. It contains the photogrammetry data that you, the Flight Sim user, specify when you create the manual cache for a given area. This data is never overwritten unless you choose to delete the old manual cache file and replace it with a new version. Finally, if this does not help performance, what exactly is it doing? Put simply, it's allowing the sim to keep a local copy of the photogrammetry data in your local drive storage and to use that data in the event that the connection to the internet is lost. Let's say you like to fly around Cleveland, Ohio a lot and you have a rolling cache defined and active on your sim. In the event that the internet connection is lost, you will still see Cleveland and all of its photogrammetry glory since that data is in the local rolling cache file. But let's say you lose your internet connection and decide you want to fly around Manhattan. Let's also assume you use a sim daily and Manhattan is a city you've never or rarely flown around in the past. Since it's a sort of new area for you, its photogrammetry data is not in the rolling cache file. With your internet connection down, flying in that area will only present you with AI-generated geometry instead of the full glory of the photogrammetry you would have gotten had you been online or had your local rolling cache file had a copy of the data or you had a manual cache of it. Manual cache allows you to create a cache for a given area that is always available on your local storage for the sim to use. That way you can create caches for areas that you like to fly in without having to depend on the rolling cache file to possibly have that data in it. That's it. If you don't care about this feature and your internet rarely goes offline, it's not really a consideration. You can turn caching off for both rolling and manual if you like. Some users have reported that their performance is better with cache turned off, and that could be due to the fact the system isn't having to read and write to files constantly. It's all up to you. As long as you have your internet connection, caching does nothing for you. I hope this cleared up any confusion about what the caching system is doing and why it's there at all. If this video helped you, please hit the like, as that really helps. 
If you want to get notified of future videos, click subscribe and the little bell next to it to get notified of the next video. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Discord as well if you like. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, and until the next video, take care.